Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss about kidney. This is the visor of kidney with associated structures. Let's identify the associated structures. You have a tubular structure that have thicker wall. This is so this will be the abdominal aorta, thicker wall. And just by side of this, a thin walled structure. So this is the inferior vena cava. And from the abdominal aorta a branch projects into the kidney so this will be the renal artery and from the inferior vena cava some structures also enters into the kidney so this will be the renal vein now another structure ureter we know that ureter enters into the bladder so if in your viscera if bladder is present then trace starts from the bladder and this will be the ureter and if bladder is absent if bladder is absent such as in this case so you ha then ureter will be free and a tube free tubular structure will be the bladder it will be the ureter so this is your ureter now ureter hold the ureter in most posterior position so we have to hold in this manner now ureter goes most posteriorly so this is our anatomical position now turns the upper pole of the kidney backward then medially yes in this way okay now tell the anatomical point first of all we have to say that right kidney remains at lower level than the left kidney as we know that liver is on the right side so for this reason right kidney remains below so interesting point is that transpyloric plane transpyloric plane passes through the hyla of both kidney but in case of right kidney it goes at the upper part of the hilum but in case of left kidney it goes lower part of the hilums longitudinal axis of the kidney directed downward and laterally transverse axis of the kidney directed backward and laterally okay now upper pole nearer to, to the midline than the lower pole and hilum of the kidney directed medially and ureter in my little finger this ureter lies most posteriorly and don't miss this last point Achha. now uh, we have to say the presenting parts of the kidney so kidney has two surface uh, this is the anterior surface posterior surface upper pole and this is the lower pole and this is medial border medial border okay now upper pole of the kidney situated 2.5 centimeter away from the midline this is hilum of the kidney where structures enters or exit from the kidney and this hilum is 5 centimeter from the midline and lower pole 7.5 centimeter away from the midline and the position of the kidney according to vertebra level is 12 thoracic vertebra upper pole 12 thoracic vertebra and extend to third lumbar vertebra correspond to the lower pole so uh, now we goes to the surface this is the anterior surface of the kidney now we have to study the relation anterior relation yeah. have atlas now this is the right kidney and here this is the right kidney okay so at the upper pole here as we see this is the suprarenal gland so here is the area for suprarenal gland now along the medial border along the medial border here the duodenum second part of the duodenum so here is the area for duodenum and this is the area for liver so this is the area for liver here now here the hepatic flexor of the colon so this is the area for colon and here area for small intestine this is the area for a small intestine now the left kidney this is the left kidney in the atlas this is the area for suprarenal gland this is the suprarenal gland so here suprarenal gland uh, here it is attached here this is the area for spleen area for spleen here it is area for stomach area for stomach 
here this is the pancreas pancreas over the hilum this is area for pancreas now uh, in the lower pole medially small area for small intestine and laterally area for colon as we see in the atlas now the posterior relation of the kidney as we can see in this atlas from medial to lateral kidney rest on the 12th thoracic to lumbar 3 so in this position actually so we have medial to from medial to lateral this is here swas major muscle and then quadratus lumborum and then transversus abdominis quadrata uh, here swas major then quadratus lumborum then transversus abdominis just like this serial medial border near the upper pole it is convex and near the lower pole it is also convex but in between them here are hilar notch and this hilum is the port of kidney and here some structures enters and some structures exit from the kidney uh, from the relation now we say the relationship of the structures uh, from before backward from before backward we have renal vein before backward we have renal vein and the structures that comes from the inferior that goes into the inferior vena cava this is the inferior vena cava thin walled this will be the renal vein here it is not so well defined and then renal artery and then most posteriorly the ureter so renal vein renal artery and ureter as as a rule we know the veins are superficial and arterials are deep okay uh, here we have seen the thicker thick walled uh, abdominal aorta and we have seen two ventral branches here out of three this is the celiac trunk and this is superior mesenteric artery and on the right side this is ab, uh, inferior vena cava and uh, below it divides into two branches common iliac vein okay, okay. here is the single kidney now another how to determine the site we have only one point that ureter and we keep the ureter so in a manner so that it goes untwisted downward and lies most posteriorly so if we uh, hold it in this way the ureter lies most posteriorly and goes untwisted downward so this is the left kidney uh, now we will discuss about the structure of kidney uh, kidney uh, here we macroscopic structure and microscopic structure first macroscopically kidney uh, is divided into two portion renal substance and renal sinus renal substance again divided into outer cortex and inner medulla okay the most prominent part of the medulla is renal pyramid these are conical mass conical mass these are renal pyramid there are 8 to 18 renal pyramid it has apex directed towards the renal sinus and the base directed towards the cortex base okay now from the base of the pyramid some projection into the renal cortex these projections are called medullary rays and the portion from the renal pyramid to the renal surface this is renal cortex and from the cortex some projection also goes into the renal uh, medulla and this projection are situated in between the renal pyramids that it is one pyramid and adjoining pyramid this portion that comes from the cortex this is renal column of Bartim that situated in between the renal pyramid now microscopic structure uh, the microscopic microscopically the unit of kidney is nephron and we have another functional uh, unit that is called uriniferous tubule let's clarify this is a portion of pyramid this is a portion of pyramid and this is uh, adjoining cortical area and this pyramid and adjoining cortical area together forms the renal lobe renal lobe okay now the nephron nephron has two form two parts glomerular renal corpuscle and renal tubules renal corpuscle here this is the glomerular capillary this is uh, Bowman's capsule this is proximal convoluted tubule now comes here 
this is proximal convoluted tubule okay this is loop of henley loop of henley distal convoluted tubule collecting ductule collecting duct of bellini here okay. the apex of the renal pyramid is known as papilla here opens the duct of bellini now renal papilla okay. renal papilla this unites to form the minor calyces one two three renal papilla opens into a minor calyx okay then minor calyces joins to form major calyx and in a kidney two two three major calyx are located are identified and then the all the major calyces unites to form the pelvis okay. this duct of bellini opens into the renal papilla this is apex of the pyramid this is renal papilla this renal papilla opens into a minor calyx this is a minor calyx okay minor calyx they also unite unite and form the major calyx this is a major calyx formed by joining the this this and this minor calyx okay this is also another major calyx this and this major calyx unite to form the renal pelvis this is a renal pelvis okay the pelvis of the ureter uh, goes up to the lower pole of corresponding kidney then it starts the abdominal part of ureter so lower pole of the kidney is a point where pelvis of ureter turns into abdominal part of the ureter now uh, ureter has three parts that is pelvis of the ureter pelvis of the ureter that uh, ends at the lower pole of the corresponding kidney then abdominal part of the ureter and then pelvic part of the ureter that enters into the bladder okay and uh, demarcation point between abdominal part and pelvic part of the ureter is the sacroiliac joint uh, we have in micros microscopic structure we have renal substance and sinus of the ureter we have discussed about renal substance that cortex medulla and the rest of the portion from the ap uh, from the medulla to the medial side this portion is renal sinus so it contains renal blood vessels lymph node and nerve perinephric fat and excretory apparatus such as major and minor calyces and pelvis of the ureter so in this viscera if we identify the major and minor calyx at first from we start from the ureter this is the ureter so if we pull it then this is pelvis pelvis of the ureter it will be pulled so we have pelvis of the ureter and the first division will be the major calyx so this is the major calyx and now identify a pyramid and and its apex the just adjoining portion of the apex will be the minor calyx now we will discuss about blood supply of the kidney uh, at first we have abdominal aorta abdominal aorta has four lateral branches on its renal artery okay here this is the renal artery it divides into two trunks anterior trunk that passes anterior to the pelvis and posterior trunk posterior to the pelvis this anterior trunk it divides into four segmental artery this is segmental arteries this segmental artery gives rise to lobar artery that supplied a lobe of kidney that includes pyramid and adjoining cortical surface okay this segmental art uh, lobar artery at the apex of medulla divides into interlobar artery interlobar artery this artery at the base of the pyramid forms the arcuate artery okay this arcuate artery gives some project gives some branches into the cortex cortex of the kidney these are interlobular arteries this is interlobular arteries from the arcuate artery okay this interlobular arteries in this picture this is the interlobular artery this red line interlobular this interlobular artery gives rise to afferent arteriole this is afferent arteriole and from the afferent arteriole glomerular capillary is formed glomerular capillary this glomerular capillary again 
efferent arteriole turns into efferent arteriole this efferent arteriole again forms uh, another capillary called peritubular capillary that surrounds the convoluted tubules of the nephron uh, okay in case of cortical nephron it is simply called peritubular capillary but in case of juxta glomerular nephron it is called bhasa recta then the bhasa recta or peritubular capillary drain into interlobular vein interlobular vein this is the interlobular vein correspond to interlobular artery and then the name is same as the arteries as interlobular vein into arcuate vein arcuate vein join then drains into interlobar vein interlobar vein interlobar vein into uh, eventually renal vein and it drains into the inferior vena cava we will discuss about portal system in circulatory system we have pulmonary circulation systemic circulation and portal circulation portal circulation is a special type of circulation where two capi uh, uh, blood vessel connects between two capillaries before draining into the heart okay we will exemplify it then we have arterial and venous portal system arterial portal system an example is kidney okay here let's discuss about this picture here is a glomerular capillary and again we have vasa recta or peritubular capillary and efferent arteriole okay this is efferent arteriole this efferent arteriole makes communication between glomerular capillary and peritubular capillary so here blood passes between two capillaries before draining into the heart so it is a arterial portal system here are some additional viva questions for you uh, development of the kidney and development and anomalies coverings of the kidney dissection from the back how many layer we have to pass and juxta glomerular apparatus now let's discuss about coverings of the kidney we have four coverings from inward to outward just adjacent to the kidney surface there is fibrous capsule of the kidney this is fibrous capsule just outside of fibrous capsule there is a fatty layer called perirenal fat okay next anterior uh, then renal fascia renal fascia anteriorly anterior layer and posteriorly posterior layers of renal fascia and surroundings pararenal fat pararenal and Uh, we hope that we are we are coming with more visera soon please stay tuned with us please subscribe our channel and share with your friends thank you for watching our videos